Welcome to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting challenging issues, fascinating people, and important events in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. Tonight's show is about one of those key events. One of the factors in evaluating the quality of life in a region is about the human condition, the question of, are we healthy? Two of the organizers for today's Health Summit, which, by the way, was attended by nearly 200 community leaders, are Hubert Morgan, who is a principal with Stanhope Consulting, and Pat Bankston, who is the director of the IU School of Medicine, the Northwest Campus. So you are the two of the ringleaders for this whole event today? We were. Yes. And there was a few others too, right? You? There were the, the committee, the advisory council that has been formed for One Region, One Vision, uh, is composed of about 35 people. Many of them were there as well as uh, a, a, a group of community leaders from other aspects of the One Region initiative, including transportation, education, um, a variety of others, to give their input into what we're doing for now this, health. This is a whole new model. That, Hubert, you've talked about. We're kind of trying to approach each of the issues of quality of life and really focus on one. Why are we doing that? So my response to that question would be this. Um, in the past, there were 10 indicators that were measured, and they were measured factually. So this is kind of the quantitative approach to all the research that was done and delivered through a 2012 report. Well, this sounds boring if you had a summit and you reviewed all the data. That's not what you did, did you? So the, here is the qualitative perspective. So there's a gap between kind of the factual measures and how those indicators show the health of the region and people's perception of how well the region is doing. So we wanted to establish, you know, here's this quantitative um, perspective, what's the qualitative perspective, and let's look at the gap and try to close the gap, because if we need to educate people more about, you know, all of these indicators, that's what we should do, because all of the facts show this, but people's perception is this. So we so. see things like high smoking rates and high levels of obesity and all kinds of things, yet we've got people here going, we're really pretty healthy, or we're horrible. Uh, what's the... Why is yeah. there such a disconnect, Pat? <clears throat> Very frankly, we want to make sure we know our region is unhealthy. Um, and uh, the committee is, uh, form, has been formed by one region to actually do something about, about it, gathering together leaders in the healthcare industry and from all as aspects to get something done. And today's meeting was to, to derive input from a variety of the other sectors of the one region um, initiative to give input to us about what we could do and actually accomplish with uh, minimal resources, but with a lot of people cooperating together to make our region healthier. And, and very frankly, um, it, the, what was established is that we have to combine individual responsibility with education and a few other things to, to, to help people come to the conclusion that they need to do more for themselves. Well, I want to get into the issues in a second of kind of what came out of, the, out of this, but to, to, you said everybody knows we're an unhealthy. In, in fairness, Americans are pretty unhealthy as a whole, is yes. this true? But Northwest Indiana is unhealthier than most. We're, we were rated highly on all of the indicators that uh, are gathered by all kinds of agencies in terms of health. We're 92nd of 92 counties in a variety of things in Lake County. Lepore County is also al almost as bad. So uh, there are a variety of indicators that exist, not only the health indicators report, but also uh, county by county rankings from the Robert Woods Johnson's Foundation that show that we are the most um, among the most unhealthy in Indiana. Well, let me ask this question. You came here from Jamaica, so did, did he bring our average up a little bit? Oh, he mean, must did have. Did he help, help us out? So if we, bring, if we import a healthy Jamaican, it makes us look a little bit better? I is, think this, is this true? I want to know, Hubert, from your perspective. I know we <laughs> run fast, so that must be some health indicator, right? Could, could be the health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, this event was kind of done in a different format. It wasn't a bunch of presenters standing up there. In fact, you were kind of the, uh, the ringleader today. You were the master of ceremony. You were the f key facilitator. What was this process you were trying to do? Because it was definitely different. Yes. So we feel that we should give the opportunity to the participants to hear so we're sharing information with the participants that they can perform through their discussions and deliberation at a high level. Um, 
we design the meeting, so the three hours, to iteratively go through discussions and choices made in terms of prioritizing, um, whether it's a discussion about what's the biggest impact on health from the other indicators. And that builds on, creates a foundation for people to then, at the end of the meeting, make the tough choices in terms of, from their particular perspective, how are you going to shift the indicator and advance it forward over the next couple of years. So this is a much more interactive, and there were presenters. And engaging. Uh, I think everybody gets to see your picture on TV at the moment, <laughs> but uh, you did a, did a great job with that. But through that process of discussion, people were trying to come up with, I, I noticed, kind of the challenges that Pat was talking about. What are the key challenges, and what were the action items, right? So what did you see as those, I, I guess, you know, being there myself, I was hearing education, and kind of accessibility is two big challenges. How do you see that, Pat? Yeah, also the economy, because if folks have jobs and money, then they can afford to you know, perhaps have more accessibility. So all of those were part of what we were talking about today. And then, <clears throat> so those were the initial stages of Hubert's uh, poll, so we could get to a baseline of understanding. And then we move forward from that to discuss aspects of um, d details about exact kind of projects that we could do as an advisor council. All of us have been, as you know, Keith, on a thousand of these kind of events where good people of, today, yeah. of people of goodwill have come together to try to make something happen. And in the end, what's important is what comes out of it, what actually is a result. And we wanted to make sure that we had concrete action items so that we could do something to help our community rather than talk about high-minded things that were certainly wonderful but n couldn't be accomplished by our small group. Well, one of the neat things is you, as you conducted this, there was keypad polling. People had these devices devices that they could respond to answers, and it was very much uh, time sensitive. I mean, whatever they were coming up with, you guys were posting right there on the screen. That was, that was pretty amazing. So people made some choices. They voted, and right away they saw the response. So almost 200 people are in the room, and um, they voted and just talking about challenges. The vote that got the highest amount in terms of the question, what are the top challenges Northwest Indiana faces in terms of health? Education pertaining to health choices, highest amount. Accessibility to all levels of health care, another top choice. Better behavior choices for healthier lifestyles. So the keypad polling allows the discussion to happen, choices to be made, and the immediate response to be shown to the entire room. Well, I will say I was impressed with Lakeisha and your whole team in terms of what they were doing and putting that up instantly because you were collecting the information from the audience, putting it on a computer, putting it in front, and voting. So we really had some real live responses. So was there any surprises for you today, Pat, and things that were said or just did you have an aha moment? Well, no, I, I actually, actually it, it went better than I, the surprise was that it went as good as it did. I think it accomplished exactly what we intended it to accomplish, and, uh, and Hubert and his team performed very well. well. Um, I, I do think that there are some action items in the end of it that we can pursue, and, and uh, that was uh, what we intended to do. Uh, again, you've been to these things before. People, there are different ways of doing it, putting little dots on the wall and things right. like that, but this electronic way of doing things was fast. We got through, accomplished a lot in a relatively short length of time. And I think one, one of the things that's most important about this approach is that we, we could have done something like this with just healthcare professionals, but we did it with transportation people and uh, safety people and education people and a variety of other parts of the community. So, and the, the theme was that it, they're all connected to one another and health is connected to all of them and that they can have input and provide ways for us to think about these things that perhaps the healthcare community hasn't thought of. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, t that it wasn't all healthcare people, it was people talking about health also, not just about healthcare. That's right. And I remember the uh, police chief, I think, from Gary stood up and said, there's definitely a direct correlation between public safety and health. We got people with drug problems and alcohol problems, and they're the ones we're having to, to deal with. 
Uh, Hubert, it's, it's so interesting. I'm watching you pour over the information here. You brought a whole bunch of it. <laughs> I didn't see you look at a piece of paper today during the whole facilitation, so now you're getting a chance. What's jumping out at you from what was collected today? Because there's a lot of data collected. So I think that one of the things um, that was particularly interesting is that 40% of the people that were there were from health. So people who advocate on behalf of health and are probably even activists around health, practitioners. The next highest amount was people in education. So clearly people made a choice in terms of attending this because they understand how impactful their sector is to health. So how do we deliver a more educated workforce, children, and all of these things. Um, we are all connected in, in terms of all of these indicators. So if there was something that you know, jumped out at me was the amount of people who are from the, the education sector. And then we had a whole table of people who were in public safety. And for the most part, these were police chiefs. Right. So again, you know, there is an impact that they feel that their sector has so in terms of the process, what we did was initially we had 10 people per table. Uh, there was a facilitator there and all 10 indicators were represented. So we mixed everyone up. And then when we got to the last question of the day, what can your sector do? We moved people that they sat with their colleagues. Mm -hmm. So there was a whole table of people from public safety transportation folks were together. So we were trying to foster the type of discussion and deliberation that, uh, had, that the diversity of the table had. You know, one of, one of the things I, I want to make sure we share because uh, you're talking about having all these different people there from transportation, from education, from other sectors of quality of life indicators. And uh, I think we all feel this is such an important thing. I know this station, uh, the TV station and the radio station here, both were very committed to this. We did a radio program that's going to be on, I think, on Monday. this coming Monday at, at, eight, at 1 o'clock. Uh, there's a story on the news, I think, we, we did. I mean, we, we did a lot of coverage. And I think it wasn't just the station saying, but, but the leaders in this community saying, this is really an important issue. Is this maybe? Is it the most important? You're a medical guy, so well, maybe you're, it, you yeah, know. Sure. sure it is, and, and it is always. As you get older in life, it becomes more important to you because you see, you know, sort of the winding down of your life, but the, and your healthcare issues increase as you get older. But um, the issues of, of health are with us every single day, and, and especially those who have suffered chronic illness uh, can tell you how, how debilitating and cha life-changing those things are. So what we like to do is try to keep our citizens as healthy as they can and have a, a, a lifestyle that's wonderful. It, but it's easy to forget health when in the day-to-day -day living. It's easy, we're all busy, we're all overwhelmed by work stuff. Um, to make health a priority is something that is very difficult for many people, especially at the end, lower economic uh, end of the economic spectrum. It's not for nothing that in the indicators report, Porter County does much, much better than Lake County and LaPorte County. Um, and, and so ec economics are part of that. And, and so folks who uh, have uh, issues of uh, not having a job or no job prospects or, or uh, living in poverty of one sort have a more difficult time concentrating on those health issues. One of, one of the themes I noticed, uh, because education kept coming up, but it w the comments kept being, we need to be making healthy choices. Individuals need to be making better choices, uh, adjusting their lifestyle, changing their behaviors. I mean, it was focused on, we've got to do something kind of at the micro micro level. Um, how, do you think that's right on? I do, I do, so the answer is yes, I do think so. Um, but Keith, I wanted to just, I'm, I was just looking here, and I'm going to mention one of the action items that the police chiefs, because this is another thing that I think is right on. So the police chiefs voted on something, and everyone voted. It didn't get the highest amount of votes, but here it is that they're on the streets and seeing the impact that public health safety has on our populace. A trauma center for violence and drugs. And they spoke about that at their table 
because that's the thing that impacts them so much. But it didn't get the highest amount of votes. Right. So, so sometimes there are some of these things that can come out of the conversation. What we should do is ask ourselves, what's happening in terms of trauma in this region where violence and drugs is concerned? And we have you know, the opportunity now to, to, to say, not only do we know this, but we have people in public safety who are reaffirming that for us. I thought one of the other interesting ideas, I think it was Vanessa Nathan from St. Margaret's, I believe, stood up and said, we need to do, uh, was it one million miles walk? Yeah, one region, one walk. One, one region, miles. one walk, walk a million miles. And that got a lot of positive response. Was that the number one or the number two It was thing? tied for one. It was tied one. for one. Tied, yeah, there were three. So, which is neat is, and I heard you, Pat, saying, this is something we could actually do and probably wouldn't cost us much. No, because so many people could get involved in it. We could, it's quantifiable, so you can make a competition out of it and get uh, the hospitals involved, getting the educational institutions. And then you could cross-fertilize cross a little bit. The medical students and the nursing students and others could get out there while the walk is going on and offer advice and counseling and, and do so blood help. pressure and you know yeah. some of the other things that, that our students are, are willing to do. So we could do a lot of different things at this event and make it a, a regional, well, not just an event, but a series of events and a, maybe perhaps a year-long thing that we could get a lot of people involved in. We could do, wouldn't cost any m much money at all. The, 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 uh, the media would help us with advertising and uh, I think it would be a neat thing yeah. to do. Well, let me get your, both of your takes on this. As we were talking, education kept coming up a lot today. Uh, that we need to educate people. And I was having a little sidebar conversation with Dennis Rittenmeyer about this. And I said, you know, we're, we are educating people about health care issues, but it doesn't really take. And I remember in some of the, the models of change, it talks about you've got to get people to think differently and feel differently in order to get them to behave differently. Well, we're educating people about you should eat better, but are we getting really how do we get, and is it part of the education process, get the people to think differently and to feel differently so that they really act? Dennis used the word indoctrination, so, and I know, Pat, you're like real <laughs> <coughs> anti-big government, so does that sound like big brother stepping in to tell people how to think and act? Yeah, the, the knowing how to behave and, and doing it are two different things. And, you know, I say at my table, you know, I used to be a runner, and the hardest decision I ever made every morning was walking out the door to start the run. And I think that's true of a lot of people because the, th the things that make us healthy aren't necessarily the most fun things that we have to do. At least that's our perception of it. And it's a lot easier to be a couch potato and, and, than to, uh, to actually get up and be active. So I think that we people know that. I mean, it's it's like smoking. People know we aren't supposed to change. smoking. But then, so we have to find ways to help motivate them, um, and that's why I think this idea of a of a million mile walk would be a neat thing to do to help motivate people to get out the door, and have some fun. And if we do motivate people in that way, you know, then there can be some spinoffs from that. Like you know, make sure you have your yearly physical, and make sure you do the things that are necessary to control those things, which are minor issues now that could turn into major issues later on in your life. So Hubert, do we have to have a propaganda campaign to get people to think differently and to behave differently? I think that we have to have something. I mean, years and if not generations of behavior has gotten us to where we are. And I think that um, we're not going to be able to do it by just saying that we need to make some changes and not realize that we are going to have to put in the hard work to, to turn that behavior. Um, there are a lot of generational issues. So for instance, some of the healthy things that when we were probably younger that our parents did, and we ask a generation who no longer knows how to practice some of these things. So we ask people to eat things that are green more, but they don't know how to prepare it. That's true. So, 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 so we should have start a cooking show perhaps here? Well, there, the are some, there are some, some benefits to the idea. I mean, there are lots of people that are involved in uh, having gardening um, classes and gardening things and establishing gardens in or especially urban communities where that vegetables was, are hard to And that was by. one of the ideas today, again, about gardening. There was a lot of interesting ideas today. We're down to the last couple minutes, so just, uh, you know, a, a thought. Did this accomplish what, you know, what, what has this helped us move forward to do? 
I think that any time that we can go across all three counties, across 10 sectors, and have them sit down and discuss something that involves them, we have accomplished something. So the next time that we have a conversation, it might not center around health. It might be, you know, something like, you know, I don't want to say transportation, but one of those sectors, um, public safety. So people are now understanding that there is a venue for them to be able to go and advocate across their discipline and say that when I work, there are things that impact my work, but it in terms of moving the solution forward, I might need your cooperation, but you're in a totally different indicator area. Right. So you might be in education, but now we know how to talk together. To talk together. We're down the last 30 seconds or so, Pat, so your uh, thoughts. I agree, and, uh, and we've got some concrete steps to take. We have some, uh, some projects that seem doable. We'll filter through those as an advisory council, and we will make something happen that will increase our health in Northwest Indiana. Well, thanks to your leadership and Charlie Brown, who co-chairs with you, sure and the whole team of 30-some people on your team that put this together in the one we'll region group. And we will, we will be sharing this on websites and getting it out in the media. So thank you both for being here and sharing this very exciting event with us today. Thank you. All thank right. You. I went to my physician last week for my annual physical examination. He started with, how are you? Which turned into, how have you been feeling? The standard questions began to flow. Headaches? No. Chest pain? No. Dizziness? No. Fatigue? No. Sleeping? Well, kinda. Th the list went on. He eventually told me I was boring. I think that was his shorthand for, you seem fairly healthy. Then he followed with, you should drop a few pounds, eat a little better, and exercise a bit more. Okay, now I'm confused. Am I unhealthy with all those shoulds attached? Or healthy yet need improvement? Well, that was my personal evaluation and one that many of us experience. We hear that a huge number of people are unhealthy because they're overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes, lack of physical activity, and on and on. When we ask ourselves, are we healthy? we are usually not talking about illness. Unexpected sickness may be brought on by other factors, or we may have a chronic condition that is genetic. I believe that when we talk about the condition of our personal health, we are focusing on those things which we can control. We are looking at our actions that contribute to keeping our bodies and minds in better or best condition. So how do we get healthier or change our behaviors that are keeping us in a state of not healthy. As we are often reminded, it starts with me. I have to convince myself that there are ways to improve what I do. It's easy to point at other people and notice how big they are, how slow they move, and how unhealthy they look. It makes us feel better believing that we are, at least, in better shape. First, get the focus back to you. Make that list of what you need to do differently in your daily life that will help you be healthier. Maybe Michael Jackson had it right in his song about looking at the man in the mirror. I know he was singing about changing attitudes, but if we look in the mirror, maybe it will remind us that we should drop a few pounds, eat a little better, and exercise a bit more. Hey, thanks for watching Lecture Focus. Have we got you thinking about the issues of health in our region and the world? More specifically, about our own health. Then tell us about your thoughts by emailing to focus at lakeshorepublicmedia.org or reach us through our website, which is listed on your screen. Join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying make a positive difference in our world today.